All right, so we have uh, talked about Fourier series so far. Uh, and in today's lecture, we are going to talk about continuous time Fourier transform. So this is a new chapter. This is chapter four of the book. So we have already completed three chapters of the book. Okay, continuous time Fourier transform. Have any of you heard of Fourier transform before? Have you taken a class on Fourier transform before? Was it part of 2050? Yeah, it was part of 2050. Okay, all right. So, um, okay, so let's talk about where this whole Fourier transform thing came from. So here is the deal. We know that if you have a periodic signal, then xt is equal to weighted sum of harmonically related complex exponential. In other words, xt equals to k from minus infinity to plus infinity, ak e raised to jk omega naught t, omega naught equals to 2 pi over t. So this is what we did in chapter three, and we have been discussing about it over the last two weeks. <clears throat> And these AKs are called Fourier coefficient. And the other thing to notice is this is an infinite sum. Can we not assume that it's an infinite sum based on the fact that it's going from negative infinity to infinity, or is there like, is that the tell sign or what, what, what do we use? To this is just an observation. Have? This is just an okay. observation. So there's no assumption involved here. This is just an observation that if you have a periodic signal, it's the infinite sum of uh, uh, Fourier coefficients multiplied by the harmonically related complex exponential. Okay. So we, now, we know that for periodic signals, we can write it and we can expand the signal uh, using Fourier coefficients as an infinite sum of uh, harmonically related complex exponential. Now the question is what happens when xt is aperiodic? Okay, so the natural question arises is if your xt is not a periodic signal, it's an aperiodic signal, then how do we, like, uh, can we write something like a Fourier coefficient expansion for it or not? It turns out that Fourier, Fourier said the following, I can view an aperiodic signal as a periodic signal with infinite periodicity. Okay, so it's a very uh, 
cool idea. The cool idea is I you give me an aperiodic signal and I'm kind of wondering how do I compute Fourier series coefficients and so on. And suddenly Fourier told me that, wow, um, you know, just think of an aperiodic signal as a periodic signal with infinite period. And a lot of things could maybe make sense. And that's what we are trying to do today. We'll try to make sense of this particular statement. So what happens when T goes to infinity? So I see that my omega naught will go to zero. Um, my K omega naught will still remain, uh, it'll still go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So if my T is very, very large, the K omega naught will be going from minus infinity to plus infinity. So seems to me that this idea could make sense. Okay, so let's see how. Any questions so far? Okay. Let's consider the square wave signal that we had talked about. So this is T1, this is minus T1, this is one, this is XT, this is T, and Let's assume that, oh, so let me write it as x tilde t because I'm going to take some limits in the future. So I'm going to define it at x tilde t of t and x tilde t is periodic. x tilde t is a I'm going to define another signal, xt, that's it. The, the xt is just a square wave at the origin and after that it's zero everywhere else. So this signal looks like this. That's my signal XT. So is it an obvious observation that as capital T goes to infinity, X tilde T converges to XT? So it, 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 what I'm saying is X tilde T of T converges to XT as capital T goes to infinity. So I have a periodic signal x tilde t. I let the period go to infinity and I recover an aperiodic signal xt. All of us agree on this obvious observation. Why wouldn't it go past the negative T1, or I'm sorry, the, the positive T1, if, if T is going to infinity, why why is it just approaching that, that one small section? Or is it because it's periodic that it's gonna be the same value regardless as right, it's approaching? Right, right. So there, okay. yeah, this is going to look like this. There will be a periodic signal like this uh, for X tilde T. And for xt, there is the, the signal is zero afterwards. After t1, the signal is zero. Before minus t1, the signal is zero. Okay, let's recall some results from our uh, previous discussion. 
So we know that the Fourier coefficients for the x tilde t And this goes k equals to minus infinity. K is in Z. Okay. Now we'll get back to this particular uh, Fourier coefficient discussion a little later. So let's go back to our discussion about this convergence result that x tilde t converges to x t. Let's get to that. So what do I know? I know that x tilde- I'm sorry, could you go back to that slide? I almost sure. finished copying it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Sure. So here is what x tilde t looks like. This is summation a k e raised to j k omega naught, and a k is given by This is my synthesis equation and analysis equation. My goal is to let capital T go to infinity, which means my omega naught two pi over capital T will go to zero. Let me make a small change. I can take the T on the other side of AK, I mean, on the other side of the equality. So I get T AK equals to minus T over two to plus T over two.
So let's go back to uh, the synthesis equation or an analysis equation. So I see that if I let capital T go to infinity, uh, we'll have we'll have an integral on the right side and then we'll have one over t so i don't quite know what exactly this thing is going to converge to so i'm going to let t go to the other side and i'm going to just look at t multiplied by akt no sorry ak so that turns out to be just the integral minus t over 2 to capital t over 2 of x tilde t and the usual uh, way to compute the fourier coefficient taking the integral with respect to e raised to minus j k omega naught t. Now what I know is my x of t is the same as x tilde of capital T between minus t over 2 to plus t over 2. So I can just replace this integral with this particular integral. Okay, so I'm just going to let the limit be minus infinity to plus infinity and I'm going to replace from x tilde t, I'm going to replace it with x t. And then the, the, the rest of the term will remain the same and I'm going to call this as capital X of JK Omega naught, where I define capital X of J Omega as integral X T e raised to minus J Omega T DT. This is my definition. This is how I'm going to define my capital X of J Omega. Okay, any questions so far? We have just done some simple manipulation. Okay. Let's look at the synthesis equation now. X tilde capital T of T is summation AK e raised to JK omega naught t, k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Turns out that my a k is capital X of j k omega naught over capital T e raised to j k omega naught t. Okay, so I want to let, remember my goal is to let t goes to infinity. So, so I'm, I'm getting into a, a little bit of a trouble here. I'm getting into a trouble because if I let t goes to infinity, I'll have omega naught goes to zero. And then I have an infinite summation from k equals minus infinity to plus infinity. And I, what else do I know? I know that omega naught is two pi over capital T. So how do I make sense of this summation? Because I want to take the limit capital T goes to zero, okay, capital T goes to infinity. And I have three terms. Let me highlight the three terms. This will go to zero. Sorry, this will go to infinity. This will go to zero and this will go to zero. And I have like an infinite summation here. So a lot of stuff is going on in this equation and I want to simplify this. Uh, what do you think I should do? If that omega naught though in the numerator of the uh, fraction is going to zero, wouldn't that make the whole thing zero anyways though? So the problem is this infinite summation. So yes, one term is going to go to zero. Like individually, every term is going to go to zero, but the infinite summation will not go to zero. Uh, you know, so when you take the limit, that's one of the problems of calculus, which is 
every term in the stuff is going to zero, but overall the summation, because you're taking an infinite sum of things that are very, very small, it need not be zero. Any, any, any thoughts on how can I... So here is one idea, right? So if everything is written in terms of omega naught, probably things are going to be easier because I can let omega naught go to zero. And hopefully something cool will come out of it. So let's try that. Let's try to transform everything in terms of omega naught. So the only thing I need to do is I have a T here. I have a T here, I can replace it by two pi over omega naught. Okay, and then I can just take omega naught going to zero because that's the same thing as saying T goes to infinity. Okay, so let's do that. I have K goes from minus infinity to infinity. I have capital X, JK, omega naught, E raised to JK, omega naught T. This gets divided by two pi over omega naught. So now everything is in terms of omega naught and I see that there is some further simplification I can do by taking omega naught on the top. And I can take two pi, two pi is common to uh, all the coefficients. So I can take two pi outside the summation. Okay, so let's backtrack what we have done so far. So we wanted to compute the Fourier transform of a aperiodic signal. So we first constructed a periodic signal, which is an approximation to the aperiodic signal as capital T goes to infinity. Now we look at the periodic signal. The periodic signal can be written in this format the Fourier coefficients can be written in this format. And my goal is to let T goes to infinity. That's what I want to do, okay? Uh, if I let T go to infinity, I know that my omega naught will go to zero. And either I take omega naught going to zero or I take T going to infinity, it's going to be the same operation. So let's do that. So we first try to define this X of J omega uh, in this particular fashion, and it will be called the Fourier transform of the, of the signal X, aperiodic signal X. But let's, for the time being, let's just think of it as some number. X of J omega is some number for every value of omega. And then I could write my X tilde of T. I could write this approximation after going through a series of steps. I'm able to write this uh, this x tilde of t, which is the periodic signal, I can write it in this format. Now, everything is in terms of omega inside the summation. And I could take omega naught going to zero. Now I can take it because everything is in terms of omega. There is no capital T term here. And omega naught going to zero is the same as taking capital T going to infinity. So I know that on the right, on the left side, this term is going to converge, this term will converge to X of T as capital T goes to infinity. What about the right-hand side? What is this converging to? So I have one over two pi 
and then I have an infinite sum with a very, very small number, omega naught. What does this converge to? Remember your uh, lessons from Riemann integration. An integral. Of what? So let's, so K omega naught goes from, so K goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So K omega naught goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. So the summation will turn itself into an integral. And then what should I write? K omega naught will become omega e raised to J omega T and omega naught will become d omega. So this side is going to converse to, as you let omega naught going to infinity, the right side is going to converse to this integral. This is the Riemann integration. Riemann integration. Where did the where did the k omega naught go? So k omega naught became omega. Okay, let me. So let's try to let's try to do the Riemann integral. Uh, let's turn this integral into the uh, into the format above. Okay, so I'll have minus infinity to infinity x j omega e raised to j omega d omega. This will be summation. K goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Let's say I'm approximating it with some small value of omega naught. So omega naught is my discretization factor for doing the Riemann integration. So I'll have x of j k omega naught e raised to j k omega naught t and then k plus one omega naught minus k omega naught. Right, this is how we do the integration. Each of this is zero omega naught two omega naught, three omega naught, and so on. And this value is my X of capital X of J K omega naught E raised to J K omega naught T. Okay, that makes that's sense. This value, yeah. Okay, so that's where I get this uh, expression from. So K omega naught turns into omega and this omega naught turns into D omega because that's equal to K plus one omega naught minus K omega naught. Okay, so now I have been able to recover the signal X of T by taking the limit omega naught goes to zero. Um, I'm able to recover the X of T as an integral of the X of J omega. So this gives me two sets of equation. One is going from X of T, small X of T to capital X of J omega. And the other one is going from capital X of J omega to small X of T and that defines my continuous time Fourier transform. So the synthesis equation is X of T equals to one over two pi J omega E raised to
जे ओमेगा टी डी ओमेगा एंड द कैपिटल एक्स ऑफ जे ओमेगा इज इंटीग्रल एक्स टी ई रेस टू माइनस जे ओमेगा टी डी टी this is a fourier transform because the integral is involved here so x of j omega is sorry x of t is a uh, is an integral equation of capital x of j omega whereas uh, the other one was fourier series um, because it was a infinite summation not an integral so that's the difference between a transform and a series series means summation transform means integral any question so far in the derivation so the uh, fourier transform is from the uh, xt to big xt what is the reverse called again just the uh, inverse fourier this is the inverse fourier transform uh this is inverse fourier transform this is the fourier transform now if you recall our discussion from fourier series you can't really take fourier series of any periodic signal the periodic signals were supposed to satisfy three conditions known as dirichlet condition uh, so if the signal satisfies if the periodic signal satisfies dirichlet condition then a fourier series representation is uh, possible uh, the same thing happens for fourier transform as well so there are three dirichlet condition in this case as well number 1 is my xt has to be absolutely integral integrable I have an aperiodic signal the first dirichlet condition says well the aperiodic signal should be absolutely integrable the second is should have finite number of maxima and minima in a finite interval and the third one is xt should have finite number of discontinuities in a finite interval
So these are known as Dirichlet's condition. If your aperiodic signal satisfies these three Dirichlet conditions, then a Fourier transform is like you can you can compute the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is well defined for that signal x of t. Okay, this is very similar to the case for Fourier series as well. So in the Fourier series, we wanted our xt to be absolutely integrable within the interval zero to t, zero to capital T. We wanted xt to have finite number of maxima and minima in the interval zero to t, and xt should have finite number of discontinuities in the interval zero to t. So that was the Dirichlet condition for Fourier series, and the Dirichlet conditions for Fourier transform basically mimics the same set of uh, conditions. Except that here in the Dirichlet condition case, I want my xt to be absolutely integra integrable from minus infinity to plus infinity. So it's not a finite interval anymore. It's an infinite, inter infinite the entire real line over which this has to be integrable. Okay. So the result is, and I'm talking from 1850s. So results would be somewhere in 1800s. Let me just write 1800s. Um, XT satisfies Dirichlet conditions implies X of J omega exists. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we'll do a couple of examples which computes the Fourier transform of uh, aperiodic signals. So the first signal I want to, let me write example. X of T equals to E raised to minus A T U T. and I want my A to be greater than zero. This is what my signal looks like. X of T decays exponentially fast to zero as T goes to infinity. So this is an aperiodic signal, as we can see. Um, it has, uh, in any finite interval, it has only one maxima and one minima. Uh, in any finite interval, it has at most one discontinuity. So before zero, it is continuous. After zero, it is continuous. Around zero, there is only one discontinuity. So it satisfies the second Dirichlet condition, sorry, third. And it, if you take the integral of xt, uh, it's also finite. So therefore it satisfies all the three Dirichlet's condition. So I can take the Fourier series, sorry, Fourier transform of this particular signal. So let's do that.
Now what do I do? I need help. How do I compute the Fourier transform of this particular signal? You can combine the exponentials. Right, I can combine the exponential. Uh, I have ut, ut is zero when t is less than zero. So I can go from zero to infinity, e raised to minus a plus j omega t dt. Wow, this looks uh, manageable. Not that difficult. Remember that A is positive. So hopefully I'm writing the correct. Okay, now I have to evaluate this. So what should this be equal to? Minus one over A plus J omega. Uh, I have E raised to minus A plus J omega infinity minus E raised to minus A plus J omega zero. What do I get now? What is this term equal to? What is this term equal to? I want to remind you A is positive. Is that zero? Zero. Zero, right. What about this one? One. One. So I have a negative sign here. So this is basically negative one in the bracket, square bracket. And then I have a negative one outside. So this becomes one over A plus J omega. So that's the Fourier transform. Of this if only it were that If only it were that easy in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it'll be that easy in the exam. In the real world nowadays, a uh, lot of it is done on computer, so you won't really have to do it by hand. But I, I mean, you can imagine people who were in at and back in 1930s, who were laying down the foundation for the communication systems in the US back in 1930s, they had to do all of this by hand. So um, <laughs> they didn't have computers back then. Uh, thankfully, now you have computers, so you can let them do all this computation for you. Okay, let's look at second example. my x of t is e raised to minus a absolute value of t, a is greater than zero. So this x of t actually looks like this. This is also aperiodic and it also satisfies the Dirichlet's Dirichlet condition.
Okay, so now I'm in trouble because I have an absolute value of t inside the integral. So what should I do? Any thoughts, what should I do? Can you split it up into positive, negative, and zero? Yeah. So I'll split it into two integrals, one go that goes from minus infinity to zero, in which case I know that absolute value of t would be e raised to a t, e raised to minus j omega t dt, and then from zero to infinity, e raised to minus a t, e raised to minus j omega t dt. Now, um, you can, of course, compute this integral by the same method as we did in the previous example. And it will turn out that this is equal to 2a over a square plus omega square. Let's pick our favorite function for example three. What's our favorite function in this class? It's the impulse function. The weirdest function in the signals and systems class. Let's look at X of J omega that's e raised to, sorry, delta t, e raised to minus j omega t dt. What is this integral equal to? I want to remind you, integral of f t delta t dt is equal to uh, f zero or actually I should write it in a more general form delta t minus t naught dt equals to f t naught this is something we studied in maybe lecture two or three when we were talking about impulse function so what is this integral equal to based on that result it would be e raised to minus j omega zero which is equal to one so actually for impulse function the fourier transform is equal to one everywhere for the entire value of omega it's equal to one so all omegas have equal contribution in the impulse function. Okay. Let's go to the final topic for today's class, which is the periodic signal case. So now suppose xt is periodic and when xt is periodic, it doesn't satisfy the Dirichlet's condition. So 
So Dirichlet's condition is not satisfied, but nonetheless, we can actually come up with a creative way for writing the Fourier transform for this particular case, where let's consider a simple example, my xt is e raised to j omega naught t. So if I define my x of j omega as two pi delta omega minus omega naught. So I'm just being creative here. I'm going to allow the Fourier transform to include delta functions, okay? So if I define my x of j omega this way, then what do I get? I'll have x of t equals to integral minus infinity to infinity x of j omega over two pi e raised to j omega t d omega. And this is exactly equal to e raised to j omega naught t. Okay, so I wanted to have a periodic signal. I wanted to come up with a Fourier transform for periodic signal so that I could recover the Fourier series uh, uh, type uh, expression. Now I realized that for periodic signal, uh, the Dirichlet condition is not satisfied primarily because periodic signals are not absolutely integrable. So, so how, how do we define the Fourier transform for periodic signals? Well, we came up with a creative way to do that, which is to include delta functions in the expression for Fourier transform. So if we allow Fourier transform to include delta functions, we saw that we could recover e raised to j omega naught t. So now for more general signals, I could define my x of capital X of j omega as two pi summation k equals minus infinity to infinity two pi a k delta omega minus k omega naught. Then in this case, my xt, which is integral of given by this fashion is actually exactly equal to this is the way to define Fourier transform for periodic signal. We will recover the Fourier series expression for periodic signal xt by using this uh, type of definition for Fourier transform. Okay. So that's all I have for today. Um, and uh, hope, hopefully you will have a good weekend and we'll meet again on Monday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks.